Hey you folks, Quilly Dean here and welcome to Let's Try Automation, the car company tycoon game. This is not a business management game and it is not a car driving game. It is a game for people who love the nitty gritty details that go into car and especially engine design. Now I am not a car guy, but I can appreciate a good nerd out when I see it. I've been following this game development for quite some time now, several years. I think they uh, initially posted some uh, screenshots and video to Reddit and uh, I've been following them on YouTube as well. And these guys here that make this game, it is a small company and it is still an early access. There's still a lot of stuff that needs to be polished and put in here. You can see that the campaign and multiplayer are not currently available yet. And yet, um, even as a non-car guy, I'm just blown away by the amount of awesome car geek stuff that's going on in here. My biggest exposure to cars is basically from watching Top Gear. Um... And yet, that to me is enough to get me really excited about this game. Uh, as we go through, if you uh, disagree with some of the units that they've used in this game, don't worry, you can change all the units around as much as you prefer. There's even a little colorblind mode, which is great. Again, it's the amount of detail that's in this game that just blows me away. There is maybe some polish missing here and there, especially since it's currently in early access, but I don't know. I just think it's quite awesome. Here's one of the aspects, uh, the tutorials here. This is a massive list of tutorials that are included in the game. Each one of these is a video that will teach you more about cars than you have ever known in your entire life. Um, like, uh, I don't know, we want to learn about compression ratios here. Let's watch a little video for a second. Compression describes the ratio at which the fuel-air mixture is compressed from the volume at the bottom of the intake stroke to the volume at the top of the compression stroke. More compression lets you extract more energy from the same amount of fuel, gaining you power for free. But there are a couple of serious like, trade-offs. The amount of compression details here. will cause a hotter burn of the fuel-air <laughs> mixture. This increases the engine's output of harmful nitrogen oxides, NOx, although the effect can be counteracted by the use of a three-way catalytic converter. Like, how? This is just nuts. So we're going to barely scratch the surface of this game in this video here, um, just because I'm really not qualified to talk about cars enough, but it is mind-blowing. There's a sandbox mode where you can basically just go and make any kind of car that you want. Um, it, is, it is really unbelievable. We'll start, like, a new car over here. You choose the initial body. You've got, you know, a variety of different kind of cars. We'll just, I don't know, take this one here or... We'll take the we'll take the four door version. Um, we can loop around. It's like ah, that's a pretty swanky car. What can you do with this thing? Well, you can basically grab any part of the chassis and start stretching it out. You want some flared wheel arches? We've got some of that. Hey, you want to you know change this little fin on the back a little bit? We've got you know we've got some of this stuff here. You can drag it in a variety of different directions. You can really start to mold this car to look like a lot of different things that you might be interested in making. So once you're happy there, you might want to go and uh, here's the, what kind of chassis part do you want? Oh, and by the way, we can sort of strip away some stuff here and then get some more or less detail. Can I not show the uh, proper chassis type? Maybe because I hadn't chosen, ah, there we go. There we are. There, now now we've built a, a chassis out of bits. I Do we want front transverse or front longitudinal? I, don't know what that is. Do we want uh, a front suspension? Do we want a McPherson strut or a double wishbone? I don't know what that is either. Although the first time you click on one of these, you will get a video tutorial explaining you exactly what the hell each one of these things are. And by the end of it, you start to feel pretty darn smart. Notice there's a quality meter as well for these different things. We can get some stats about our car later on, um, including cost and all kinds of performance. So I'm just trying to like show off some of the details here. Here, what kind of headlights do you want? Well, we'll use, we'll use these. I think these are headlights. Oh, these, hang on. Headlights, this style, there we go. And uh, we'll put them, uh, let's say, right about there. Is that what we want? No, you know what, let's let's make them a little further, a little wider, and then let's pull them over over there. There we go. I, it is, this is just the visual design component. This is not the super nerdity part, but it is pretty crazy. Do we want, uh, maybe we want one of these uh, wings on the back here? Oops. How do I, is there a reason I can't, oh. Oh, is this wing going on the top of the car? That That is just beautiful. That, I mean, I don't think anyone can argue that I am making just an absolute gorgeous, gorgeous kind of car. Um, let's back up and go into one of the scenarios instead because it'll stop me from making something that is an absolute monstrosity. So, the game comes with a bunch of scenarios and they're divided in seven categories, including the tutorials category over here, but there's also car tutorials there. It's also worth noting that within the category itself, like say if we just go directly to cars over here, um, they're ranked by difficulty, where tutorial difficulty is the easiest, easiest, easiest difficulty. And it runs not just to hard, but to 
Brutal. Oh, and insane. Actually, I didn't know there was an insane category. Um, so yeah, have fun with that. These these scenarios here, for example, doesn't even involve designing a car. It involves focusing purely on the engine, which is really the uh, the key part of the game. I'm going to go into the tutorial difficulty uh, introductions to engines over here, and we're going to start with the very first scenario to show this off. I've ha I have done it, so I have like a basic idea of where to roughly click. So we're going to hit the uh, play scenario over here and get a bit of a description. So this is the tutorial on fuel octane requirements. It is 1995. This game spans, I think, from the 1965 to 2015 right now. Uh, and depending on what year you're in, you have a different uh, set of um, components available. So here's where 1995. Your company wishes to build a taxi for the Kazakh market, but can't afford to design a new engine for their low-quality petrol. Change an existing engine to run on low-quality unleaded petrol. Okay. And there are score requirements here for getting different kind of metals. Um, so there's like some cool, we got some cool ability to view things. We can pull this out here and get a bunch of extra stats. So here we can view the engine. We can, you know, get all the components on. We can strip it down to just, well, nothing, I guess. And I don't know what this thing is called. Again, I don't know anything about cars. Um, these are like, these are the things, are these the pistons? I think they're the pistons. And those are the valves? Yeah, see, I know, I know some words, not, not many of them. But I know some. Let's uh, let's strip it down to about this level here. I think that's a nice amount of um, description. So in this particular scenario, we cannot mess around with the car model, and quite a few things are locked. See here on the engine, we can't adjust the engine block. We are working with an inline four-cylinder cast iron engine. The um, the bore and stroke, which is to say the the bigness of the cylinders and the piston and how far up and down they go, is all locked in. See, I know some words. You know why I know these things? Because I watch the tutorials in the game. This is the only reason I know anything about it. I'll also, I have Wikipedia open in my other monitor, so I can sound a little bit smarter. Um, the head and valves, these are dual overhead cam. I, I, I don't know what that means. I think it has to do with the fact that there's like two and two here instead of just one and one. Made out of cast iron, and VVL is... <clears throat> you can see, yeah, I know all about cars. Um, we can't, in this scenario, again, this is the very first tutorial, so there's a lot of things we can't uh, modify here, and we've got a set engine. We can't change the crank, or the con rods, or the pistons, or the variant capacity. I don't know what this means. But now we can start to tune a little bit. We've got compression over here. Uh, we can change the cam profile. We can't change the VL profile or the VTT. Or we can adjust the aesthetics of uh, the top. If you want to make your engine look a little different and have a little bit of a different color, you can do all those things. But what's important here is flipping over and watching the requirements. So we need to be running on low quality unleaded fuel, which is in this category over here. What fuel type are we using? So we are going to be using low quality which has a bad octane of 80 instead of this premium that our engine was currently running on. If we do that, you can see we no longer match the requirements for performance and reliability. We have to have a certain number in both of these categories to complete this scenario. You can also see that our dashboard has some lights illuminated here. The engine has failed due to knocking. Try lowering the compression. We can see that if we go to the testing page here, we can actually start the engine. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And if we get the stats going, we can see the performance is just like, it's crapping out over here. We've got a max RPM, I think, of about 5,500. Yeah, our red line is 5,500 RPM. We got the 2,700 RPM, and the engine failed because of knocking. So let's go ahead and start reducing that compression over here. Um, if we mouse over here, you can see that higher compression gives us more power and slightly better fuel economy. Lower compression gives us much lower RON, which is actually... Um, I think lower emissions, but also it's important to prevent knocking. So we're going to go ahead and start pulling this down a little bit more. You can see all these stats change in real time. Let's keep dropping the compression here. All right. So as we get to very low compression, whoa, actually, we can get low enough to succeed. We're currently silver ranked right now. Okay, well, we'll try to improve it a little bit more than that and see what we can do. So now the engine is actually functioning, and we've got a bit of a power curve. Now, if I go ahead and um, increase the compression a little bit, it will actually improve uh, performance up until the point where we start getting a little bit of knocking. Now, there's other things we might be able to tune. The cam profile, for example. Now, the cams are... Ooh, yeah, that's right. We can pan around here. The cam are... Can I go just go up and down? There must be a way to do it. The cams are these bits here. That when the pointy bit comes around to the valve, it pushes the valve down and opens them up. And so by tweaking the cam profile, we actually change the size, either the, the length and, and the, the width, basically, 
of these uh, cams and get slightly different performance. So if we go and we can look at our score now, we are scored on performance and reliability. So there's not tons we can change for reliability, but we can improve performance probably by going with a more aggressive cam profile. And you can see here, the uh, this is this is the one I usually look at over here, the kilowatts at the max RPM. So by going with a more aggressive cam profile, we're actually pumping out more kilowatts, so more power. Oh, this is enough to get to gold. Let's keep going a little bit more aggro, see if we can squeeze out a bit more power without breaking anything else. Certainly getting a lot more. We can also look at the score over here and see how that's going. So the score is definitely going up as I keep moving this more aggressively. Oh, suddenly, is there a drop? No, no, it's just the scale has changed. That's okay. So let's keep pumping this up, getting more and more and more power by doing this. Oh, and then we start to lose a little bit. So obviously we were in a bit of a sweet spot there, right around 78.2 kilowatts. Now, do we want to adjust the compression? We can definitely get more power. Now that we've changed the, uh, the cam profile, all right, there's still a bit of a cap there. But we have, we have pushed out a little bit more power. Even our score is at around 1585 of 1630. What else can we change? Well, again, we couldn't change anything on this panel. Can't change anything here. Here, we can start to change the... Oh, that's the compression and cam profile. We can't do anything there. We've got no quality sliders. We don't have a turbo on... Uh, not, neither a turbocharger nor a supercharger on this car. It's naturally aspirated, and we can't change it. Uh, what can we do here? Oh, with a fuel mixture. We can make it uh, richer or leaner. Leaner gives you more economy. Richer gives you more power. Power. There we go. Yeah, we can keep uh, tuning that. And this is a pretty easy scenario. There's not a whole lot of meters to do. Oh, suddenly we ran into a bit of a problem over here. Running rich and we're losing some of our power output. So it looks like right around here to 12.3 to 1 is where we've got some optimal stuff. But we can also change the ignition timing which has to do with when in the cycle things get sparked. And if we go and do a little bit more of an advanced timing, there we go, we can get good enough to get a platinum. So that was an easy scenario. Let's try something completely different. Let's try one I haven't done yet, which may be very difficult. So again, that was a tutorial to teach some basic things. And each one of these tutorials here tries to teach you something um, about the engine. This one teaches you about engine reliability. This one teaches you about fuel economy. This one is about power, emissions, and quality all working together. This one's about power and cost. This one here is, um, oh, this is about using a sports car engine and trying to put it into a tiny car. And you just got your driver's license as well as your first car, which is quite the bargain, but it lacks power, that's for sure. Why not spend all the money you saved on a turbocharger? Don't destroy that engine and don't turn it into a gas guzzler either, your dad warned. So we've got that and you can see, it requires that we use premium unleaded fuel and that there's a turbo and you're scored on performance, economy, and reliability. So we've got that. We can also go into the uh, car tutorials over here. So we've got, uh, I like this one, Clark's Sun Tuning. Nice Top Gear reference there. Years ago, you sold, sold your beloved crop hatch. I don't know what that means. I guess it's, is it a hatchback? To your friends, your friend Clark's son, because he needed some cash and he just got his driver's license. Being a young petrol head, Clark's son couldn't resist tuning the car, aiming at only one thing, more power. Five years have passed since and Clark's son is about to buy a new road monster. Time seems right to give in to your midlife crisis yearnings and buy back the hotch. Uh, obviously times have changed though, driving the tune crop back home almost got you killed. Before you find an early metal grave, the probably worst handling car in the world needs to be fixed. So there's a requirement. It's got to cost less than 9,000. It's got to have a drivability of more than 25, a sportiness of more than 18, and a comfort of more than 14. So this would deal not with car, um, with engine tuning as much as car design, probably things like suspension and tires. We're gonna, um, we're gonna take a look at this, this one here, the automatic for the, uh, the people. I haven't done this one yet. I might fail. We might go for 10 minutes and then call it quits. We'll see how it goes. So if we take a look at, where do we get our scenario pop-up? Do I have to go to a different page? There we go. So our requirements, the car cannot cost more than 7,500 bucks. It has to have a top speed of more than 230 kilometers an hour, and it has to use a four gear, I believe, automatic transmission. I think that was in the, uh, the scenario text. Um, and then we're scored on drivability, sportiness, comfort, and acceleration from zero to 100 kilometers an hour, or for you people who still use miles per hour, that's zero to 60 in less than 12 seconds, which is not actually that fast, but this is an older car. It's a 1965 is, is the year that we're in right now, so we don't have a lot of fancy options. We can go ahead and uh, start the engine. 
get some stats on how it performs. We can watch it as it accelerates. We can watch the RPMs go up. Or it, the RPMs will go up, and then we'll see the, uh, the torque and the power. There we go. We could probably squeeze a lot of power out of that. And then it hits the, uh, the red line, hits the, uh, the RPM limiter, and then sort of stops going there and goes down and gives us some information. Um, there's the actual test mode over here where we can start the engine and then control the revs ourselves and really, you know, get a sense of the details. We can watch it go. And actually, I, uh, I kind of done goofed. I wanted to kill the music. And just make sure that, especially the engine, we're going to lower the ambient, lower some of the effects. We're going to make sure the engine is nice and loud. Uh, where were we? Car tutorials, automatic for the, the people. They actually went and made, apparently, a whole lot of uh, design stuff going on here so that when the engines go, the sounds are really good and, and realistic. Depending on the engine type. That's the limiter. And it's going to come down. All right, so uh, we do have to start, I think, with the model. So we've got our body is set. We can't change that, although I think we can change the color somewhere. I'm not sure where that is. We have the chassis. That's also set on this car. We can't adjust that. Uh, we can't adjust any of the, the trim, the lights, anything. Again, that is set on this particular model. Ah, here's the color. Let's make it red, obviously. Red cars go faster. And uh, we've got our current engine that we're going to start tweaking. So... Where do we actually set the gears? That I actually don't know. Most of the stuff in this engine is locked. That's locked. Everything here is locked. We can't change any of this. That's all locked here. Can't change the turbo. Oh, we may not be able to make any adjustments here. Looks like no. We've got the trim. Ah, okay. In the trim packages, that involves uh, selecting the gears. Oh, so currently... We actually have an automatic, but we want to switch to a manual four gears, four gear manual. Right now, it's cheap enough. It's got a top speed of over 230 kilometers an hour and that, but its comfort is poor. So we're going to have to increase the comfort a little bit. Um, how are we going to do that? Tune the suspension, maybe? I'm assuming that's going to be something that we can do. So again, that's the gears. Um, oh, comfort. Now, on these little pop-ups, you get some information. The automatic locker would actually lower the comfort, so we're not going to do that. Um, the top speed, here we go. We could actually lower the top speed, which might improve the comfort. All right, well, we'll have to leave it here at 233. The spacing. I actually don't know what that is or how it impacts things. And we don't have a graph for comfort, unfortunately, but we can go into the um, the stats over here so we can see 13.6, changing the spacing. Oh, it's probably the spacing between cars, uh, the wheels. I don't know. Actually, not sure. We'd have to load up the tour for it, so we're going to skip it. Um, and leave the uh, the differentials where they are. We can increase some of the, uh, the quality level of different things. Does this affect the actual comfort? Ooh, it did actually comfort is going up this increases costs however what we're going to do is find something else to improve comfort um we can't change the tires looks like we can't change the brakes can't change the aerodynamics ah but we can change some of the chairs we can go to a premium seat there we go all right we can keep improving that so we've improved the chairs a little bit uh, what else can we do to increase the, the scores a little bit further? It depends on what we're getting scored on. Well, we're getting scored on drivability, sportiness, comfort, and acceleration. So what if we went with, like, um, luxury, very high seats? Yeah, so that brought our score up. We can also go handmade, which is about the same and too expensive. We can phonograph? Yeah, it's too expensive. Now, we might have to find another place to cut costs. We are actually almost at a uh, gold level. We can increase just the quality. What else can we do, though? Uh, so, all right, this comfort rating, I didn't realize, is mostly like interior comfort. So if we just sit here and pump the quality, uh, then it gets too expensive. We don't need power steering, I don't think. Hmm, how else? Oh, I'd really like to get at least gold.
Doesn't really do anything for us one way or another. Uh, oh, this is helping our score and hasn't broken the bank yet. Mm, that's a little bit too much. So that's a multiplier basically and everything else. We can't change the gears. We could change the speed. No, increasing the speed is no good. Probably ruins the drivability a little bit. Wasn't much we could change in most of these other categories. What about in the factory? Oh, that's where we were. Test track. So there's a few different test tracks. The uh, the airfield test track should be very familiar to anyone who's ever watched Top Gear. It's basically the Top Gear test track, but mirrored and with some things changed. There's the Chicago corner. This would be the hammerhead follow through that sort of thing. Um, and we can do a start. So we'll do a test drive over here. We get some stats. Oops. No, we want to finish watching it. This is the, the gears. Throttle is very high. And then you can watch the G acceleration. You get all sorts of different info going on. And you can time the whole thing and see how it goes. So again, it's not uh, it's not a racing game. Hmm, detail stats. Drive Oh, hey. Comfort. All right. What can we do here? So there's a base, a comfort base, the interior and the suspension. And there's different ways that you can tune the comfort by improving things. Now, most of these we can't actually modify ourselves though. Like we can't change the brakes on this car. So we may be limited in how much we can do. Maybe we'll just go ahead and take our silver and uh, accept that that is good enough for this particular scenario here. Too expensive. The other thing we can do is go down a level here, but increase the quality. We might actually be able to squeeze out a bit more by going to the lower base and then having the multiplier. 1466. What could we do with luxury? If we bring it down to an affordable amount. Oh, so we can actually get a little bit more by going premium and a higher base quality until we run out of money. We can also put the money somewhere else too. Oh, that's locked. Fancy radio, that gets to be too expensive. What if we pull back on the cost here? Ah, all right, we got our gold. I may, I don't think I'm going to try to squeeze out a platinum. That is a really big jump from 1512 to 1630, and I'm not sure where we're going to be able to find the quality there and keep it under budget, but that was pretty good. Um, so anyway, I really enjoy tuning the engines more than uh, some of the car trim and all that because I like figuring out the puzzles. I mean, we've got uh, a very easy V8 engine scenario over here. Your project leader is a big fan of the tractor pulling and wants to sponsor the engine of a new upcoming team. After convincing your boss, you are allowed to create a new experimental, naturally aspirated V8 engine, as long as it's not too expensive. You're going to make the engine to be ready for a 900 kilogram mini puller. As tractor pullers are skilled mechanics, but no electronic engineers, your engine has to be as simple as possible. That means no VLL, VVT, or complicated fuel injection electronics. So if I know anything about um, tractor pulls, is what we're gonna want is an engine with um with a lot of torque at low rpm i suspect is going to be the key but it looks like none of those are necessarily um scored right now now it's naturally aspirated so there's going to be no turbo which actually should mean the responsiveness should be really good regardless here um what other categories do we need to get this going properly um i think we should actually be okay i'm surprised it's not giving me the uh the success chance right now let's do a little Oh, I don't have an engine yet. Oh, I got to choose if it's a V or a V flat plane. So a V8. With, I don't know, cast iron bits. Oh, we got a lot more choices here. And I don't know, push rods. Cast iron, none. All right, that would be a start. And then we'd have to pick more. The crank, cast iron, cast iron, cast iron. What else do we need to get started? Um, it might actually have everything it needs. Naturally aspirated, obviously, because they want that. Yes. What else are we going to do here? Um, carburetor. No fancy injection. It'll use, uh, we'll use the, the fanciest fuel we can use. And, um, a simple exhaust. No catalytic converter, no mufflers. Can be super loud. There we go. 
This engine technically runs, but it hasn't been tuned in any way whatsoever. This is actually a great little scenario, actually. Oh, that's a good sound. That's a really good sound. Okay, this is actually a great scenario because it doesn't start you off with a whole lot going on. You have to decide how you're going to work things. Um, there's no cost. We don't care about that. So theoretically, we could use the absolute best stuff we could absolutely everywhere. Um, we could increase the bore, which would potentially give us... I mean, it's just a much, much bigger engine. You can see, like, some of these things don't... Uh, we'd have to adjust a little bit further. So how many do we want? Like a 5-liter engine? I don't know. Let's go for a... Let's call it a six liter engine, which would be this. Oh, the stroke also factors into that. Um, let's bring the bore down. Uh, we want, I want relatively short strokes. You know what? Maybe I'm okay. So we're going to go with exactly a six liter engine this way. Um, now, I don't know if it matters what we use here. I don't know how you squeeze out more, um, more responsiveness we could do like have five valves on there just ridiculous amount of stuff oh it needs to be relatively low weight as well so cost is not the limiter but weight is so 74 66 all right these are all much lighter this is a very heavy the dual overhead cams so we might want to save a little bit of weight but we'll, we'll see how it goes engine is knocking um reducing its i don't know what the mtbf stands for try lowering the compression bottom end part is reducing it's starting to reach its limiter um we can actually save a lot of money. Instead of being cast iron, we can go aluminum or aluminum silicone or whatever. I don't know. Sure. Fancy stuff. We can do something like that. Um, same thing here. Much more expensive, but it's lighter. So they don't want any VLL, so none of that. All right. We can work with this. Next category. So same thing here. Instead of using cast iron for the crank, we should probably use... Billet steel. Does need a CNC shop, but I don't think that's one of our requirements here. Again, we're not playing the, uh, the full campaign mode. Uh, titanium? Lighter and stronger. Sounds good to me. Um, some of these are lighter, but we want, we want very high torque. What can support the highest torque in here? Looks like forged. Forge supports the highest torque. It's also relatively light, which is good. Uh, we'll leave the variant capacity there as well. Um... Try reducing its compression. Yeah, we can go with a lower compression, I think, in this engine, which seems like a good idea. We'll just try to get rid of the warning lights for now. Um, cam profile. So here's the thing, right? Performance index. With the cam profile, we can move the performance from the low end to the higher end. You know, do you want to have better performance at higher RPM or lower RPM? And you can tune that. Now, we're looking for sort of a sweet spot overall. It looks like relatively high performance or high profile might be good. We're going to come back to that one. What else can we do? We can't change anything here. It has to be naturally aspirated. That was one of the requirements, right? Can't. Can I use a turbocharge? Oh, they're actually okay with that. No race intakes, which is not, not this, is it? So, um, with the turbocharger, you do have to lower compression quite a bit to get it working again. That was a real beast. So we can see there's, a, there's some warnings here. Um, one of these is the muffler, uh, that it's probably choking things out a little bit. So we could go something like dual exhaust, adds a little bit of weight, but not really that much. Um, bypass valve? Don't think makes much of a difference one way or another. We can go with, um, larger exhaust. There's a sort of a, a maximum practical value here, which seems to be two and a quarter inches in this particular case for the vehicle. Um, which larger exhaust should give us a little bit more power. I don't think we need a, um, a catalytic converter. We're not concerned about emissions here. So by adding that, we actually do nerf our power just a wee bit. Um, again, we could put in some mufflers. 
Now the straight through doesn't hurt us too, too much, but it does add some weight and we don't care about the noise. So how do we improve the performance at this point? And well, the performance or the, the, the responsiveness. Performance is 270. If we do this, 280, 286. And the responsiveness is the same one way or another. So we do get more performance. We do add weight. But so far, so good. Um, if we made the engine bigger, technically it does increase, but then we really get some weight concerns. There's got to be a way to make this work as is. Uh, right, we can't do intakes. We're not allowed to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Can't do any of those. If we increase compression, we should get more performance. And we do. We just have to make sure we don't break the engine along the way. Now, right now, we've got a 294. How much do we need? We need 380. Oh, and then sort of falls flat. So we're being choked here. I think, oh, um, oh, I forgot to tune my turbocharger. I've got a turbocharger, but I got to work this. This turbine is complaining that it's definitely not big enough to handle the load. Probably get a little bit more there. Oh, there was a sweet spot there for a second when it climbed. Three, so it dropped a little bit. Reliability is poor. Economy is like non-existent, but that's all right. Now, we are going to hurt responsiveness with the turbo here, like quite a bit. Turbo is a good way to squeeze out some power. You get a lot of rely. How much do we need for responsiveness? More than 30. Yeah, so that's not going to work with the turbocharger. Actually, it's not going to work naturally aspirated either. Hmm, what can we do? Can't do the trim factory or the model. How do we improve responsiveness? What about the flat plane? Would that make a difference? I don't know how that engine works compared to the other one. Looks like not really. Um, if we reduce the stroke, change the bore. No, none of those are changing the responsiveness. Huh, I don't know. Oh, this is the emissions. It doesn't even show responsiveness there. So here's where you get a lot of it. No, that doesn't change it. Oh. All right, you can get more responsiveness at the high compression, but I'm not sure what we're going to be able to squeeze out there. And that's definitely not going to work with the turbocharger. Uh, they don't want injection, right? Oh, no, they're good on injection. Oh, there we go. We need fuel injection, not a carburetor. Excellent. So direct injection gets us a lot better. Okay, you can't do EFI. So injection is fine, but it has to be mechanical. All right, responsiveness is great. No race intakes. Performance is fine, though. Now, now that we've got that, we've got to bring the compression down to a place where it doesn't knock. Right there. All right. Did drop responsiveness, but we're still generally OK. All right, we're not knocking, but our performance index uh, index is terrible. Performance is or the uh, responsiveness is good, but everything else is awful again. But we did go in and mangle a lot of different options here. Um, yeah, we'll leave that high. That's okay. Can we enrich in the mixture and have it still behave? So we can get it to around here.
think that's too much of a... Well, we got some good performance there. Now, how about high RPM? Well, things will start to shatter at some point. So right now, based on our current design, we really have to put a rev limiter around 6300, but we're not getting the performance. Well, I'm not going to sit around... Oh, uh, performance intake was fine. I'm not going to sit around here and, and subject you guys to this forever as I, as I try different uh, ways of combining things since I don't understand engines. Ooh, single exhaust increases performance dramatically. And there's another way to improve performance is with a slightly better exhaust. It looks like race tubular gets us a little bit better. Bypass valves don't seem to make a difference one way or another. Okay, bigger exhaust stops helping. Catalytic converter, all these are not helpful. Mufflers, none of these will help, obviously. Buff mufflers would not. Hmm, what am I screwing up? There's something that is missing here. All right, there we go. There we go. Get those cams going on. So we had to have them low at some point because something else was out of whack. So it's about, it's about f uh, finding whatever gives you the biggest boost early. Oh, I think we're starting to get choked off because of the exhaust now. Let's pull back to our sweet spot, which looks to be around 177 as an index. Then go back to the exhaust. There we go. Bigger. Okay, that's as big as we can get and still get performance. Now let's go back to retuning the... Can we change the compression? There we go. Nope, that's a little too high. 197. Still looks like 197 is our peak there. Well, I'm sure given enough time to tune, I would get there. I mean, obviously, yeah, best fuel we possibly can. Can't rich in the mixture. If we do, it's too rich. This is pretty aggressive uh, ignition timing. Can we increase the RPM? Oh, we can actually support a much higher RPM all of a sudden. Now, we're starting to get a little bit of, um, of knocking and some component stuff, but let's go ahead and see what happens. If we went up to 8,000 RPM, and... Hmm, bottom end part. I'm not sure we've got higher quality bits we can put down here. I think we're, we're not going to be able to actually run at that kind of RPM which is a real shame. 7,500 seems to still, um, valve float. There we go. 224. God, I would love to end this video doing this one, but this is like, this game is just like a giant puzzle game and trying to understand how engines are supposed to work together. And I don't know a lot of it. And this is a simple engine. This tractor pull engine is dirt simple. Let's, um, run it one more time here. Get some nice engine sounds. God, that is the most satisfying sound I have heard in a game in a really, really long time. The game is called Automation. It's currently available in early access. It will make you question your ability to understand anything at all. Turns out cars, super complicated. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.